is it poison or not? Well, the answer is yes, because it depends on the species. The shrub behind me, adjacent to a very busy road, in fact, you might hear some traffic going back and forth, is poison sumac. Poison sumac only grows in wetlands. And as I was bicycling on this road the other day, I spotted this shrub. And in summer, it's easy to identify because it has white berries that hang down in clusters. And as I looked around, I noticed, yes, in fact, there are other plants here that help me know this is a wetland. There are some cattails and rushes, joe pieweed and jewelweed. The soil is saturated here. You only find poison sumac in wetlands. But there's another sumac that sometimes people think is poison, but it's not. Staghorn sumac has red clusters of berries that are upright rather than hanging down. And on the tips of the stems, they're fuzzy. That is because it kind of protects the leaves and helps to trap moisture. Staghorn sumac, in fact, gets its name from that fuzz, which reminded somebody who named that plant of the velvet on deer as the antlers are first coming out. The antlers are always covered with that soft fur, and it looks a lot like what's on staghorn sumac. And staghorn sumac grows in sunny areas, in sandy fields, not in wetlands. Both shrubs have compound leaves. In poison sumac's case, there are multiple leaflets, leaflets on a reddish stem, about 7 to 13 of them. And in fall, it turns a brilliant red, but so does staghorn sumac. Staghorn sumac leaves are toothed and on poison sumac they are not toothed. The bark on poison sumac is kind of gray and mottled and it has kind of a interweaving growth pattern of the branches when you take a look. The great news is it's not very common. Poison sumac, because it only grows in wetlands, means that you pretty much got to be tromping around in waders or knee boots to come across this particular shrub. Inside the growing parts of poison sumac is an oil called urushiol. It's the same oil that's found in poison ivy. And when we brush against the leaves or bruise the twigs or the stems or even the bark, that's when we come in contact with that urushiol. And many of us are allergic to urushiol. If you've never had poison ivy, well, congratulations, lucky you, but beware because your body can change how it reacts to urushiol and over time you may develop an allergic reaction. But don't forget, you're only going to come in contact with poison sumac if you are wading through a wetland. Remember, you can find your own outdoor elements when you visit area parks and natural areas. We'll see you soon.